I know you don't get on TikTok, but I just posted a TikTok that you're in. I think I think you'll like it. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> Julian, I posted a TikTok. I posted a TikTok with you in it. I'll actually, I'll post it to uh, the Discord so that you can see it because it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. Relly, you're doing good? That's good. I know you you were in Hunter's chat. I've leached you from Hunter's chat right now. Mojo Bricky, I, it's like I almost know who you are. <laughs> How are you doing, MJ? Really, you're multitasking? Are you gonna play Fortnite with Hunter? That's what it looks like is about to go down. Let me just share, oh, it's under review, I can't share it right now. Oh no! Julian, you've oh, you've leaked the the new one. I haven't even played it yet. In fact, I have to I have to add it in. I'm glad you joined, MJ. We got some some fun stuff going on today. Oh, a whole 50 bits too, MJ. You're gonna be top. Bit donator, real quick here. <laughs> We're doing news today. <sighs> Waiting for people to get in before we start going, because I want to hunter, uh, not well, hunter streaming. But uh, Julian came in with new. Uh, he found the new emote already. I like it. Um, I have to, sh I have to show the announcement for it. Rally, you're ugh, now. I think you're top now. Thanks for the bits, guys. This is this is wild. <laughs> I like barely even understood people use bits. Bye, MJ. Have a have a nice Saturday. Hope you're having a good having a good weekend. <laughs> I love y'all. Y'all look great. We're having a we're having a good Saturday already. We're I'm I'm streaming for seven minutes. We've already got like two hundred bits going. This is great. I'll make a Julian emote. Look, right, let me let me look real quick and see. I'll show you. I'll show you where it is. Oh, you're not leaving. You're just hanging out. So, yeah, stay. What am I saying? Stay here. Let me see emotes. I'll show you real quick. Okay, so emotes. Uh, we have to get to 35 subscriber points for new emote. And it needs to be the Julian emote from Discord. If it'll let me do it, I'll do it. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna move myself back down because I look, it looks weird having me all the way up there. Oop, we're back. But we gotta get, it's right here. We gotta get 35 subscribers. I need 35 subscriber points, I think in a month for, uh, for it, which we're at uh, 28. Um, so the goal is the same goal as every stream, just get one sub. Um, that's all I care about at the moment. And uh, don't look at don't look at that one part. Don't look at it. Ugh, no, people are looking. So, MJ, you want more of the music? It does bump. Oh, 
Hello everyone, I just came in and started spamming. Oh. Y'all are doing fine. Oh, apparently a hype train is close because MJ keeps on giving bits. <laughs> We're gonna start out with another hype train, I guess. Should I show off the, the new? I'm gonna show off the new one. Let's show off the new emote with the announcement video I have. Thank you for the sub, thank you for the bits. Oh my God. <laughs> Did y'all hear the, the whole announcement? We've got a new emote. We've got a new emote. <laughs> oh man. MJ, thank you for the sub. Thank you for the bits. This is wonderful. You're just, you're just coming in here, hopping in and attacking. It's wonderful. MJ, you have my emotes now. You can use all three of these wonderful things in chat. Oh, really? Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yay, I think. <laughs> Did y'all hear the, the music for the emote announcement or is, is everything just weird? Ugh. Oh, you believe in me? Thank you. Okay, great, great. I'm glad the because I couldn't hear it on my end, and I was like, oh no, this is awful if it's not working. So, what? <laughs> great. I'm glad, everybody. <laughs> I'm glad everything is, is going on. All right. It's Saturday. Uh, I usually do news on the Saturday, on Saturdays. I don't have very much planned at all, so if y'all have things that you want to do, um, this one's going to be a very chill stream in fact i gotta put the music like all the way down now because i i can't um talk about astro world <laughs> is is it is there a new thing going on with astro world or you just want me to talk about astro world <laughs> oh no i'm not gonna talk about astro world that sounds like a bad idea i thought you were <laughs> i thought you were talking about uh travis scott that's <laughs> This is much worse. I'm not going to do that. You are talking about Travis Scott. Yes, people. Yes, okay. I know it's real news. We're not. Okay. See, you guys are talking about it. Fine. Here, I'll pull up. I'll pull up an article. I don't. I don't want to talk about this. This sounds bad. Wow, we're having a great. We're having a great Saturday morning, everybody. We're going to talk about awful things going on in the world. Uh, Astro World Fest Friday night, apparently, like, literally last night. I haven't heard about this yet. Uh, Travis Scott concert. Oh, you know what? I did, I did see a TikTok about this. No one knows it actually happened yet. Okay. I saw a TikTok about this where people were like lighting chairs on fire at the concert and stuff, which is, uh, which is not okay. So we'll, uh, we'll avoid this one for the moment. Um, let's check in on Hunter while I prep the things that I want to actually talk about today. What's Hunter up to? I will talk. I can talk crypto. I want to talk about, let me pull up what I want to talk about real quick. Oh no, you guys are seeing what I'm, t I'm doing. <laughs> Uh, we got 
Did you get the mug shot? I did not get the mug shot. Uh, we're gonna talk about... Hold on, does Hunter get this kill? Nice. He got the assist. Good job, Hunter. <laughs> okay. We're gonna talk about this whole thing with iDubs and uh, Rice Gum. Made bank in 24 hours. What did you buy, MJ? <laughs> what crypto were you into? Oh, oh, three stars. Uh oh. All right, let me talk about. Let me talk about this. <laughs> I okay. I did have somebody uh, talk to me yesterday, uh, and they were like, "Hey, have you heard about? Uh, have you heard about Shiba Inu coin?" I was like, "Have I heard of it?" And I sent him a screenshot of how much that I have because he's a he's a friend. And he was like, oh, you were real rich last week. And I was like, I'm st I still am like five times up from my original investment. It, it, <laughs> I'm not concerned at all. Hold on. We'll, we'll talk crypto. Let me go to, uh, let me see if Coinbase will let me go without logging in. Okay, yeah, here we go. All right, let's do crypto talk. The whole market is down uh, 40.41%, so less than a half a percent. The whole, whole uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to show messages. All right, well, this is just not going to, it's okay. The chat always wins, it's true. Let's talk about cryptos. Um, Bitcoin in the past week, uh, nothing interesting actually has happened to, to Bitcoin in the past week. If we look, it went like up pretty, pretty high to 64, which is not its all time anymore. Is it 64? Oh, no, 64 might've no 67 was that's right. 67 was all time high. Matt Damon told us all to do it. Okay. I believe it. <laughs> Matt Damon doesn't know what he's talking about. I, Hey, if Matt Damon told me to buy crypto, I'd do it. And that's the problem with these celebrities shilling out <laughs> and, being, and being sold out to cryptos, those uh, pump and dump schemes. Um, is the problem is, is people tweet these things out without knowing what they're doing. But that's a whole different discussion. Um, basically, if it's not on Coinbase, I don't trust it and I'm not going to buy it. Uh, Julian is a braver man than I am in that sense. So... Bitcoin's not doing anything interesting. Uh, I mean, it, it had, it's had a really r weird year. Most people have thought that it wasn't going to get up to, I think, 15K this year. Um, because about this time last year, it was almost to... Uh, it's showing weird. Where, where is it? About when it was 7K, so April of last year, people were saying it'd be lucky to get to 15,000 this year and then it hit 60 and then people were concerned because it went down to 30 and I was like no it's it's fine now it's back up to 60 no one's concerned about Bitcoin uh, the fun one here is Ethereum because Ethereum and Ethereum 2 are tied together uh, but it's uh, I don't need to think if I have hot guys telling me what to do absolutely <laughs> that's <laughs> MJ that's a very based based thought that you get yourself in here uh, so we got Ethereum. Uh, these aren't the interesting ones right now. Crypto.com rocks massive socks. What is crypto.com? I haven't actually seen crypto.com. I've heard of it, but I don't do anything on it. Sure, take my cookies. Julian is AFK. All right, see you in a bit, Julian. Enjoy lurking. Uh, buy crypto at the true cost, and then it has a card. Okay, so the crypto.com is basically like Coinbase, MJ. I use, I just use Coinbase. Um, Ethereum's not very interesting. The interesting ones right now are, where is it? Shiba Inu, which is back down significantly to a point where in the past week, it's gone down 23%. It's actually down much more. I almost bought more when it was down again. But uh, I bought in about right, I want to say I bought in about right, no, this isn't right. 
I bought it like way before this. It was late October. I want to say it was like there was a, there was an extra zero. Coinbase is the OG. Yeah, I have four types. Okay, what are you holding? We'll take a look at it. Uh, uh, basically, I think uh, Shiba Inu is a very fun one, um, mostly because it made me money, and I like that. <laughs> um, is it going to go up again? Probably. Probably. Um, it's going to need to do some like real heavy lifting to to be like a like an Ethereum type. Um, Dogecoin sucks. <laughs> uh, I originally bought in at seven cents. But put like a hundred dollars in at seven cents right here ish. The one you mentioned, Elon. Oh no. <laughs> uh, and then I sold at about fifty cents, I believe, and then I bought back in at forty five, and now it's at twenty six. So now I'm now I'm just stuck here, uh, holding Dogecoin forever, because it's not going to do anything interesting now. Do Doge Lawn Mars, that's my Elon. You okay? <laughs> uh, I did read an article the other day saying that where is it? Solana is gonna be the next Ethereum. Now, whether that's true or not, I have no idea. But I personally uh, would enjoy. I I might I might buy one. You know, I might buy one and see something love potion. <laughs> Uh, I might buy one and see how that works and how that goes. Um, man, for people who love who don't like crypto, this is a very interesting discussion. I'm sure. I'm not giving anything new, uh, but what I'm saying is is that if we look at Solana's past year, uh, I don't know much about like the fundamentals of Solana, but it does look pretty good. Let's see. Uh, I'll read the white papers not on stream because that's boring. But uh, one way Solana achieves high transaction speeds is a combination of proof-of-stake consensus mechanism and a new mechanism called proof-of-history. A proof-of-history is designed to keep the time between computers on a decentralized network without all the computers having to communicate about it and come to an agreement. Mm. Okay, so this is essentially... Oh. Nice! That's a that's a great screenshot, actually, MJ. <laughs> Matt Damon knows what he's talking about. <laughs> um, so uh, Solana is uh, cutting down on the time that it takes for mining to happen, which is something that I know a lot about is the crypto mining. Um, so I think Solana could possibly be a new like high priced. Coin, but I don't know if it's going to be the, the next big one. People are also talking about... Let me see if I can find Raven Coin. Raven Coin is apparently going to be the next big one. And I don't know too much about it at the moment. What makes it different? A block reward of 5,000 Raven instead of 50, block time of one minute instead of 10, total coin supply of 21 billion instead of 21 million, and a new mining platform, Kapow, which allows for more decentralized mining. Okay. So this is like a, a miner coin, essentially, is what I'm hearing. Cool. Uh, any, any cryptos anyone wants me to look at, talk about? See if anything else is interesting about them. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. You hold the crypto.com coin because there is a crypto.com coin. It's up 320% in the past year and 50% in the past week almost. That's pretty wild. I haven't seen I haven't seen this one. I don't even know what it does. Is it just like oh, staking in the crypto? Crypto.com. Interesting. Okay, I want to talk about. I want to talk about this. Okay, so we got crypto, dot com coin, loop ring, Doge Lawn Mars, which is kind of wild, and Shib Shiba Inu. Okay. Oh, you you bought into Shiba Inu before, before I did, or after I did. So I have, <laughs> to put it into perspective, MJ, I have six times the amount of sheep as you do. <laughs> and 
day, and I bought it for like twenty five bucks. <laughs> okay, so a few years ago, and I'm actually going to pull it up here. A few years ago, I dubs, made a video it's on. Where is it? This is so long ago now. Okay. He made a content cop Jake Paul. Go back, 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 back. Which is basically him making fun of rice gum and calling him out for being a piece of shit human being because he's a piece of shit human being. Uh, love you, rice gum. If you ever want to be on spelling bee, hit me up. <laughs> Don't actually love you, but if you want to be on spelling bee, hit me up. He never will, and I'm okay with that. I can sleep while knowing that uh, Rice Gum will never talk to me. Um, and there was this thing for a while afterwards where Rice Gum was like, this guy won't even box me. He's too much of a wimp. He's not going to do anything. And this was 2017 is when this was, this was posted. October 3rd, 2017. And recently, <laughs> Rice Gum has come back to say, again, that iDubs, Ian, will not fight him. <laughs> and so, on June 16th, Ian posted, I'm considering agreeing to this rice gum fight. Uploads have been slow, but I'm worried about my health. What are the possible risks? And we didn't hear anything about it. We didn't hear anything about it until October 29th, when iDubs posted this, peep, this video. Julian, I'm giving, I'm, I'm mostly giving iDubs the attention. <laughs> it's funny because iDubs is, is putting something on. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Fuck rice gum, but here we go. Hello, everyone. For the past four months, I have been dealing with a child. A child by the name of Brian. Little baby Brian, a.k.a. Rice Gum, reached out to me back in 2018. Well, he tried to reach out to me. I wasn't following him, so I saw it on Drama Alert. He wanted to do a boxing match. Down, if he's down, we'll make it happen. If not, then he's a pussy. Fast forward to present day, June 2021. Not so not completely present, but this year. Rice Gum reaches out to my wife, my precious wife. And you know what he says? He says that iDubs is irrelevant and that he's fallen off. Get him to box me. So I'm like, shit, man. What if I do do to that? So uh, Anissa and I talked about it and she said, oh, that's a great idea. You should actually box him. And I was like, oh, okay, let's do it. I've been battling people mentally for years and I think it's a good idea to put my neck out there, risk getting punched in the face a few times for more entertainment. So I responded to Rice. I said, yeah, let's do it. Are you serious about it? He seemed very serious about it, though he did want uh, Keemstar to organize the event. So naturally, I took on all the responsibility of organizing this event because I'm not gonna have Keemstar do that. For the past four months, I have been grinding nonstop. I have been flying to LA, Las Vegas, Pimp having status. meetings over Zoom, meeting up with boxing managers, boxing promoters, looking at venues. I even went and got LASIK, eye surgery. That was my brand, wearing the glasses. I got LASIK eye surgery so my contacts don't roll to the back of my head when I inevitably get punched in the face. Finally, after four months of searching, I find a guy who can it, set up a bomb ass event. The boxing promoter and I reach out to Rice Cummings. We say, we're ready. We're ready to set up this event. And what does Rice Cum do? He ghosts the boxing promoter repeatedly. He ghosts me repeatedly. And then when I finally am able to contact him, he says uh, things like, oh, my neck is sore. Okay, Wh what? From playing Fortnite? Why is your neck sore? And why do I give a shit if your neck is sore? He's talking about how it's not enough money. And I'm like, what do you mean not enough money? <laughs> he wants like a million plus dollars and I'm like, Ricegum, you're a gangly loser that has zero boxing experience and you're not even very famous. Why the fuck do you think any network is going to pay you a million dollars plus to fight? You don't even have other talents. There's no reason to ask for a million dollars. 
I'm getting a little off topic. Ricegum was going to earn more than anyone else, okay? I'm not taking a salary on this boxing event. My earnings are going to pay all the other fighters and for charity, okay? So Ricegum would be earning the most, hands down, yet he's still wimping out. I'm trying to tell him all the upside. I'm like, dude, you could sell merch. You can turn me into the alien from Family Guy, get knocked out on the front of a t-shirt. You could sell that and make a lot of revenue. But he, he's so focused on getting money for like just existing. And it's like, you don't make money from just existing. You actually have to do the, the tiniest bit of work to leverage it. And who knows, maybe if you win, you'll make even more money. Think about the opportunities. You can then fight Jake Paul beat him, then fight Logan Paul. Think about all the opportunities there are. Ricey poo, rice chump. The other excuse that he used is that there wasn't enough hype. And I'm like, what do you mean not enough hype? That no, we're not talking about the fight. Of course there's no hype around it. And he also probably should have thought about that before contacting me again in June of 2021. Why are you, why are you DMing my wife if, if you don't actually want to fight? That seems like a pretty, like a serious inquiry, don't you think? So this is pretty much my last attempt reasoning with rice gum. Uh, you're m earning more money than anyone else on the card. Uh, my money's going to charity, so I'm like, it's a good cause. Um, how do I, how do I zoom this in? How do I get this in here? I guess we're doing a boxing match. <laughs> MJ and I are boxing now. Uh, MJ, if you if you get the card going, if you get a couple other fighters on the card, we'll do it. We'll do it for charity. We'll give it all to my wallet and uh, say that it's for a good cause for the opening uh, production studio. We're doing it. I'm in. It's going to be a hella amazing event. It's nostalgic. It's kind of weird. I don't think anyone would expect you and I to fight, which would be super fascinating. Uh, and four, it's an even match. We're both six foot one or two, and we both weigh about the same. So it, it'll be pretty fair and interesting. It's not going to be like that go down. new main versus blue face fight where it's like a little midget facing off against a like the longest, lankiest giant in the world. I want it to be a good event, and I, I want the person I'm fighting to be at least, like, I want it to make sense, you know what I mean? Uh, either re a really big influencer who's just gonna bring in a lot of people, or a nemesis, right? Like a nemesis for me is obviously Rice Gum. Another nemesis who was gonna be the backup, Keemstar, when I reached out to him saying, hey, would you replace Rice Gum? What did he say? The only person I'd fight is Ethan. I don't think Keemstar's at all confident that he can fight and beat me. And that's fair. He's like five foot six or something like that. If you guys have any other uh, influencers in mind that wouldn't wimp out on a, on a boxing match, I am so beyond down. I don't care how <clears throat> big and strong they are. I don't care how athletic they are. I don't care how short or tall they are. I'll fight Dr. Disrespect. I don't care. I'll break his little scrawny legs uh, in half. He will get absolutely destroyed by me. Let me know. I want to hear in the comments. I want I want to know what you think would happen in, in a fight versus me and Rice Gum because like I'm sad. I'm very sad because I want the event to happen. I spent a lot of time doing it and Rice Gum is just fucking like not being cooperative at all and it sucks ass. All right, guys, thank you for hearing me out. I'll, uh, I'll hopefully have an update soon. Maybe I'll talk about, uh, you know, if this rice gum thing doesn't work out, I'll, uh, I'll make fun of him some more and also talk about the people who will be potentially it's, replacing him. That would be ideal. Where's the alert? Where'd the alert show up? All right. So Thank you, MJ. The extra, the extra one bit. Do you know that every one bit that you give to me is a penny? And every penny that I get is, oh, 10 bit. Okay, there we go. There we go. <laughs> We're getting there. I do appreciate it. Where, I, the alert box is supposed to be popping up with, with the bits amounts. Is, is it not? Oh, okay, it is. It's just very quick. Cool. All right, so. Homeboy <laughs> was uh, was supposed to fight this kid, Rice Gum, and set everything up. Got a got a boxing promoter. Got like 
everything's like ready to go, basically. And uh, <laughs> nothing happened. MJ, you just keep putting bits. <laughs> you're giving so many bits. MJ, you're almost like to the amount of bits that you <laughs> you could have just you could have just gifted a sub to somebody, which I'm still grateful for. I'm I'm happy to have the bits. I appreciate it. You just like having the little notification pop up, don't you? Is that what it is? <laughs> you like seeing the little thing with the noise happen? All right. So, following what's going on, we got after that video, uh, he said that I've been getting emails from 12 to 23 year olds who are willing to fight for free to replace rice gum. Y'all are bringing a tear to my eye. And then I'm getting DMs and emails from influencers with nuts. What if I let you guys decide which of my potential suitors is most entertaining for the matchup? Bits are fun. Yes. Rice gum officially wimped out. This guy's response is really pathetic. This is just a sample. This event will still happen without him. So Rice gum did respond. And he said, I didn't even watch the vid. Keem said, I can't say this word because I will get banned off tw Twitch. Called me out first. First off, it's crazy how everyone says that I'm craving clout and want attention. I haven't posted in over a year and on a different wave. I thought iDubs would grow up and be more mature, but he's on some childish energy. Still making YouTube videos? How? Let's, uh, <clears throat> let's see what, what Ricegum is up to, because I know what he's up to. There he is. His last, he's been streaming on Twitch. Ricegum just streams on Twitch now. Last one was three months ago. <laughs> <laughs> and, he's, and he thinks says, I stream often. Follow the stream. Where is his... There it is. What has he been doing? I don't... Okay, whatever. I, Julian's right. Stop giving him attention. It's not fun. Um, there are internet people who have different audiences. So iDubs uh, made himself famous on the internet for making fun of people, but not in a way that's like, he doesn't make fun of like kids or things. He makes fun of people who are being assholes and need, and need like a reality check. That's what iDubbbz got famous for. His, na his name's Ian. Rice Gum got famous for showing off money to kids and making videos making fun of kids and then telling people that they're irrelevant. That's pretty much what I know about rice gum. And then they just started having beef. But basically how it happened, MJ, is that it's uh, IDubs has this series called Content Cop. And four years ago, he made a video on, on rice gum that got 51 million views. And then continued to call this guy irrelevant because he wanted to. And then they were trying to put up a boxing match. And that's what we're talking about now is the, the, the boxing event. So I so Ian's still putting on the boxing match and really just wants <laughs> people to join in. And it looks like things are working well. Has he posted anything since the 4th? Okay, so he's going to announce the winners in about a week, which is great. And I would love to see this. This is really funny. That's <laughs> Anthony Fantano. So that's, uh, that's that news. Um, I'm going to show off real quick because I'm proud of it. And let me, hold on. I'm going to, I got to post the uh, emote announcement on Twitter. Any, any inter other interesting things happen in the internet world for anybody else? Julian is sent a video in chat. Let's see if this is something that I can play. And ah, yes, we can. Yeah, okay, we can do that. J uh, John Oliver is probably gonna uh, sue the fuck out of me for this. But and now, last week tonight asks tomorrow. How is this still a thing? This week, daylight saving time. How is this still a thing? If you're like most Americans, you've been groggy all day after losing an hour of sleep to daylight saving. 
And as you struggle to remember how to change the clock on your f***ing microwave, you may have wondered, why is this happening? For years, conventional wisdom has been that it benefits one particular group. I know it started because of farmers, I'm almost sure of that. But that's not actually true. It gives them extra time to plant, extra time to harvest. It has nothing to do with farmers. I remember years ago hearing that it was for the farm people. The farm people want nothing to do with this, as they themselves will tell you. I know really no farmer that I'm aware of that benefits from, from you know, actually farm activities and daylight savings time. Of course daylight saving doesn't benefit farmers. Cows don't care what time it is because they're cows, and cows are idiots. So if it's not for them, who is it for? The modern daylight saving was introduced during the First World War as a fuel saving measure by the Germans. That's right, you lost an hour of sleep this morning thanks to Kaiser Wilhelm. And while back then daylight saving may indeed have saved fuel, in the modern era, energy consumption is a little more complicated. In fact, when Indiana adopted daylight saving in 2006, guess what happened? The data shows that daylight saving actually led to a 1% overall rise in residential Indiana electricity. Indiana just not of you. Of course it did. <laughs> it's just different because time than everybody else. An hour later in the summer. That's kind of really wild. Doesn't matter when you're blasting an air conditioner and staying up all night, psychotically scrolling through Instagrams of your ex's honeymoon to Morocco. But that's not to say daylight saving doesn't have any effects at all. Studies show there is an increase of car accidents and work-related injuries the week after the time change. That's right. What Why? you lose in sleep, you gain in mortal danger. Oh. Despite all this, 70 countries around the world still observe daylight saving. Mm. And yet by going by local news reports, none of them could tell you why. From Australia, well, daylight saving is almost over for another year, and with it comes the usual debate over its merits or lack thereof. To Italy. It's a pain in the ass, basically. To even the Germans, the people who started this whole mess. The time change for many people is ridiculous. Whether it's an hour ahead or later is complete nonsense. Complete nonsense. And that's coming from a country that thinks this is a word Whoa. and that this is dancing. So if it doesn't it's benefit our energy bill, in your house. our health, or our stupid, stupid cows, it has to make you wonder, daylight saving time, how is this still a thing? Yeah, uh, daylight savings time is tomorrow, uh, and the only time anybody ever Googles daylight savings time is like the day before and the day after to make sure that their time is set. That is not his voice. You're correct. That was not John Oliver's voice. <laughs> okay. So, MJ, Mojo, in the chat, asked the question. So you're raising money for... Oh my God, how'd you get that so fast? Julian, I'll, I'll send you a dollar in Bitcoin if you can tell me... If you can say that word. If you can call me right now and you can say that word without looking it up. I'll do it. Don't don't fuck a cow. That's bad advice. Don't fuck a cow. <laughs> uh, so, I already looked it up. How do you say it, though? Okay, hold on. This is now a bit. This is what I'm doing now. Pronounce. You can do the F word. It's okay. I don't care about the F word. Here we go. In Austrian, Rechtsschutzversicherungsgesellschaften. And in German, Rechtsschutzversicherungsgesellschaften. Did either of y'all get that? Oh, oh, oh. In Austrian, Rechtsschutzversicherungsgesellschaften. And in German, Rechtsschutzversicherungsgesellschaften. I don't like that. <laughs> it's pronounced. All right. Cool. I'm going to go <laughs> answer this question. So MJ asked, so you're raising money for a production studio. I did this uh, last week where I talked about this to two people. Um, so I guess it makes sense to talk about it with everybody else. 
I, let me get these things up real quick. Uh, we're actually at 28. Hold on. I have things that I use to keep track of these. And I will show them to the world once they pull up. So I put on these shows. These shows that uh, all of my friends currently say are good shows. Um, and are entertaining enough for now. And they cost me money. For instance, for this month, this is the calendar for shows. Of course, today's the 6th, so we're talking about the news. News doesn't really cost me anything. This is, this is my easy day. This is where I show up, and y'all get my goal uh, for once. And we all talk, and we have a good time, and it's Saturday, and nobody, nobody's stressed out about anything. Tuesdays don't really cost me money, but they do take a bit of setup time for uh, the bad advice streams. Um, and those are, are relatively nice to have as well, which is why they are every single week. Is this making weird noises? It sounds like it is to me. <clears throat> now, here's where it starts to get interesting, because I have... And this is actually going to be a viewer game show. Uh, uh, show. There we go. This is where it starts to get interesting, because these are game shows and like narrative things that cost me money. <clears throat> the big one right now being the spelling bee. And the spelling bee cost me the most money. Uh, and the way it breaks down is a little bit like this. So the budget for Spelling Bee is about $400. Uh, that's between the, uh, the setup, the, uh, the editing, the whole, the whole thing. This is like, and it, I'm not getting paid for the work. So this is just raw cost out of my pocket every month that it costs me to make these streams. I do two litemies uh, with $25.00 each. Um, I did cut that down on the last one because I'm a little over budget for right now. And we got one Ghost Getters a month and two viewer game shows and one interrogation. So interrogation doesn't cost me anything at the moment and hopefully it won't for, for a while. I do anticipate at some point it is going to cost me money. And I haven't done it yet so we'll see how that goes. The news doesn't cost me anything. Uh, Asking Andy doesn't cost me anything. Um, Spelling Bee being obviously the big show every month right now that happens. And I want to do a couple of game shows, uh, obviously, but like same like big sized game shows like Spelling Bee is, uh, like a trivia show or something like that, you know? Um, and the Two Truths, One Lie is a, is a fun one that I'm going to start putting viewers in as well. Uh, and the viewer game show, once it's done, is, is about 50 bucks a show um, because I do want to give back to the people who are watching me. And I think that's a, a, a nice way to say thank you to the people who watch and interact uh, and are entertaining with me. So all day, yeah, that's about $600 a month. And you divide that into um, the uh, sub split that I get. And I need 240 subs a month to be able to just break even on that, uh, which is doable. I mean, I... We're doing pretty good. I have almost uh, one sub for half of my total viewership. You know, like, I have 62 followers right now, and I have 29 subs, which, if we could get to 30 subs, I would be over the moon. Um, I'd actually, my goal is to get to 50 before November 20th, uh, before 18th, actually. I want to get to 50 subs before the 18th so that we can go in knowing uh, how much... I got a big streamer coming on, MJ, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so 240 subs a month is what I would need to break even doing just these shows, which by the point at which I have 240 subs, I hope that I am doing more than just these shows. But that's what I have at the moment. Let me make sure that I can show off this other one without getting myself into any trouble. Okay, so another thing about that is that I bought a bunch of equipment that does need to get paid off uh, on a business credit card. That uh, that's it all can be paid. That's not the problem. The thing is, is like all of this, like none of this is going to go away if I don't have the money to do so. Uh, it's 
just that I'm trying to limit it, limit the amount that comes out of my own pocket, if that makes sense. So I'd, I'd really like the whole thing to be self-sustaining. And to be able to do that, I need to have what, uh, 720 subs um, to pay off all of the stuff over the years. So right now we're at 29, actually, I think, right? Are we at 29? Hold on, let me... Can, is this an alert sub count? Okay, no, I'd have to make it, which is fine. Let me go in here and just make sure. Yeah, yeah, we're at 29. Okay. Yes, so to be able to pay off the equipment that I bought, I need 720 subs to pay off the equipment, not including the uh, 240 a month that I would need to pay everything off, uh, like every month. So, yes, I'm the ultimate goal, good timing. So the ultimate goal here is that I like where new entertainment is going. If we look on Twitch right now, there are a bunch of people doing, well, there's Hunter right now, but... There's a bunch of people who do game shows. Um, and they're very fun, like... Hold on, I'm trying to get... Right now, this is the biggest game show on the platform. It's called Mogul Money. It's put on by a streamer Welcome named Ludwig. And it is a entirely overproduced show that is basically just Jeopardy. Like, almost exactly Jeopardy. Let me see if I can find the board. Like, they have questions, and there's the whole board, For, and they uh, have to 100. do the whole thing. Okay. I want to come into the, to the place, and I want to shake the entire thing up, and I want to make better shows, and I want to provide better things for streamers to, to make these better things, and I want to... Uh, okay, let me put it this way. <laughs> I'm going to sound insane. My goal is to basically make New Hollywood. Oh, Sybil's here now. She knows, she knows about this. My goal is to make New Hollywood. I want to make a new, better Hollywood so that Hollywood has some competition so that it is forced to improve. And the only way to do that is with new media because Hollywood doesn't know anything about new media. It just knows... Uh, make movie, put movie on streaming platform or in box office, charge their phone, you know, that whole meme. Um, and they're not taking advantage of this wonderful opportunity that Twitch provides for new entertainers. And the entertainers on the platform aren't taking advantage of it either. They're just doing things that they've always wanted to do. Like, I want to host Jeopardy, so I'm going to make my own Jeopardy show. And... <laughs> Classic capitalist incurring, encouraging competition. How sexy. Absolutely. That's what I'm doing. Uh, I want to make an entire production studio where somebody can come up to me and say, hey, I want to do this thing for my stream. And we already have New Hollywood while well, people who call themselves that. <laughs> where is that at? Are you talking about Austin? Because that's that doesn't count. The whole... Uh, the whole idea is to take like YouTube and Twitch and these new media platforms and integrate shows that uh, fit the platforms better, right? So talk show radio uh, works because people are driving in their car and listening and can call in on their phone, uh, but that doesn't work well on TV because it's not live production. If you do a live show with audience interaction through the chat, then you have people coming in and they're interacting with the shows and it, it's this whole, this whole fun thing. Um, so yes, this, this, is, this whole thing is me trying to, to make stuff into fun things. So I have a few shows right now. Some of them are proof of concept. Some of them are not. Um, the proof of concept ones being... Hold on, let me pull it back up. Oh, in Hollywood, in abroad. Uh, my point is, my point is, and, and it's, not a, it's not a bad thing. It's that Hollywood has a bad rap and they don't want to do anything about it. And they just want to like change a couple of things and move on. But they're not, 
they're not changing things. They keep on doing the same formula. That's why we got like 80 superhero movies coming out in the next year and awful choices for the Oscars, you know? That's what I'm trying to say is I just want I just want better stuff. I want everybody to be making better stuff and I want the entertainment to be better and higher quality and more fun and more thought provoking and all of that stuff. So right now I got what? Five shows? One, two, three, four, five, six, se- seven shows, which is not bad. Uh, news doesn't count, so I'll say six. Um, and between those shows, I'm sure that the ones like the Bad Advice column and the Two Truths, One Lie thing are pretty average. Um, but I, I do believe that the Viewer Game Show and the Spelling Bee, Halena H- 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 was a part of New Holly. Okay. Um, I feel like the viewer game show and, and the spelling bee are two very different, different things. It's not you, like you can look at the spelling bee and you can say that I took inspiration from parts of shows, but it's not a complete ripoff of a different show. Like another streamer did the price is right. Um, then literally called it the price is scuffed. And instead of jeopardy, it's mogul money. And I'm, I, I want, <laughs> I want to take good pieces of things but make a completely original idea and then throw it out there. I feel like I've said this four or five times. I didn't mean that derogatory. No, I understand. I don't even... Actually, I don't know if I know what Helena is. Oh, yes. Okay. I understand. I do understand. My bad. <laughs> I do know what this is. We won't talk about it. Um, but that is also part of the problem. <laughs> so that is the ultimate goal. Right now we're just seeing how big of a platform that I can raise on my own accord. And it's actually going pretty well. You know? All things considered. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my... My short-term goal is to like get a studio space so that my friends and I can all make a show and have people in. Um, there's a streamer coming in. Her name's Blushy. She's uh, very wonderful for wanting to be a part of everything. Uh, she's going to be on the Spelling Bee on the 18th, which you should absolutely come and watch, MJ, because you would love every second of it. And she has uh, a, a fairly large following on the platform. And I'm very excited about it. Uh, let's check in on Hunter. See how he's doing. He's just playing some Fortnite. Oh. Can I get out of? I don't want theater mode. Why is it so zoomed in? Why don't I see chat? No. Oh, there it is. There we go. No! Oh, he got 12. Oh, Michael, it's going okay. How was your stream, buddy? No, it shouldn't come as a shock at all. Hey, but did you want to play one? We can come back and pick you up. I can play one or two more. All right. So, that looks serious. <laughs> it's Fortnite. He's playing Fortnite. It's pretty fun. Um, Again, I... S- I didn't have anything uh, too planned out today. We're just kind of hanging out. Um, I can show you all what I want to do for the interrogation stream because I think that that's fun. How do you like my green screen, by the way? It's actually working fairly well today compared to last week. Um, Y'all want to see what I want to do for the interrogation stream? All right, so have y'all ever watched? Have y'all ever watched 
interrogation videos, like the like the criminal interrogation videos, just like raw. They're so interesting and so stupid. Uh, mostly because the criminals are stupid. But <laughs> what I want to do is I want to present a situation where there's one investigator and there's one person being interrogated, and we have like a, a brief overview of the story, and the chat basically gives the interrogator the questions to ask and then through asking the questions and getting the information from the person being interrogated, the chat will decide if the person is guilty or not. There's no, like, there's no, like, real uh, consequences to any of it. And it's all v- going to be very, like, tongue-in-cheek, very silly. And it's going to be kind of like, kind of like this video. You watched one today. Very good. What was it? With respect to interrogation analysis, it's no secret the benefit of hindsight gives you a considerable advantage when evaluating information. When you know a subject is guilty, it allows you to exclusively look for guilty behavior. The knowledge of outcome highlights the imperatives while stripping away non-essentials, and this allows you to calculate certain things that would otherwise be overlooked by cause of your own doubt. Hindsight is 2020. Everyone is well aware of this aphorism, and what's fascinating is that it not only applies, but is far more compatible to the innocent than it is to the guilty. The reason for this is because the information you have to scrutinize is reduced when dealing with innocent subjects. When you remove the versatile factors of misdirection and trickery, you're left with relatively straightforward behavior in comparison. Of course, the argument that everyone is different and can react in a different manner has merit. Human beings are unique, and there will always be exceptions to every rule, especially when you take into consideration that trauma can cause atypical behavior. Yet, atypical behavior and guilty behavior are generally distinguished from each other with relative ease. And that brings us to example number one, 37-year-old Michael Dixon. Described by his peers as popular, friendly, but also unassuming and reserved. A self-professed introvert who turned down a job as a trade show presenter due to his fear of public speaking, and kept his position as a trade show assembler instead. On August 15, 2003, in Hamilton, Ontario, police were called to report a man breaking into a jewelry store. Two officers responded and chased the perpetrator from the store down an alley before momentarily losing sight of them. At the same time, Michael Dixon was getting off a bus nearby coming home from work. He was the first person the police saw when coming out of the alley and was then arrested at gunpoint. Dixon voiced his innocence but didn't resist arrest and stated he would help in any way he could. He was taken to the Hamilton police station and questioned two hours after his arrest. So like this is what I'm Sorry, what I'm looking at is doing something like this. One could advocate this as a common policing misstep if it weren't for the suspect being described as a small white man in the 911 call. My problem as well as is, not being white. Dick- my problem is is that I don't I have a very small apartment and it does not look like a sad uh, police station. Well, if I took the painting off the wall. I might be able to pull it off. I might be able to pull it off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I know how to do it. We're good. Hamilton police, not surprised. (laughs) Dixon is six foot three. This detective has either forgotten standard procedure to review the call to dispatch or for some reason decided to reject it as evidence altogether. Michael is informed the room is being recorded and then read his rights. He asserts he is willing to speak with a detective and help with the investigation. Okay. Um, Why we're here is because earlier tonight you were arrested for breaking into a jewelry store on John Street South. Um, Now, uh, your innocence and guilt in this, quite frankly, uh, isn't an issue. Uh, the evidence I have is, fr- frankly, conclusive and overwhelming. Okay, um, so I'm not even going to ask you if you did it. What I'm at, what what I have to ascertain here is what kind of guy you are. What I'm at, what what I have. Julian, this is this is research into the new show. Do, uh, Julian, do you want to be a part of it? 
I'm still actually, I need somebody else to show up for it. Oh, no, you're going to be working that day because it's a Saturday. Saturday the 27th. If you're free the 27th, do you, do you want inter- to be interrogated or interrogate me? It will be great. <laughs> <coughs> It'll be a lot of fun. It may or may not have something to do with uh, somebody stealing a catalytic converter out of my goddamn truck. The subject maintains a forward-leaning posture and keeps his eyes both in contact and on the same level as the detective. <laughs> you can actively gaslight people under the context of a game show and see if they can handle it, LMAO. It's not a game show. It's a narrative show. It's a narrative show that is interactive, but in a different way than the, the ghost hunting one. The gaslighting will be on both ends, you see, because the interrogator wants to know if the other person is guilty and the other person knows if they're guilty or not and will have to gaslight their way through the entire situation. <laughs> so it's, it's more like a mutual gaslight, you know? You're both pouring fuel on the fire. Let's get back to this. Detectives. He displays self-confidence and poise, while it's the detective, in fact, who gives off a nervous disposition. What Michael just did is known as a non right. challenge. Right, yeah, yeah. Infrared. The idea is that it's... So, so here's the behind-the-scenes idea. Hold on, let me, let me get bigger. Here's the behind-the-scenes idea of it, right? You got, you got a crime, and everybody knows the like, basic general idea of the crime. Like, somebody stole the catalytic converter from under my truck. And the person being interrogated is given two situations, both of which the interrogator isn't entirely aware of, but are both plausible. The first one is, you're guilty and you did it, and here are the facts about that. And the other one is, you're innocent, and here's your alibi. And together, the information has to be put together. Yeah, Twitch does L.A. Noir. That's basically it. Yeah. That's basically it. But, but like a not as not as uh, pretty looking, and nobody has the interesting voice. If you're free that Saturday, maybe you could be the interrogator because I have to write it, so I have to be the one who is being interrogated. I just need someone to uh, show up and yell at me, basically. You're good at that. Let's go back. <laughs> forensic psychology. So let's break it down into components. What am I, what, what I have. In the next moment, the detective will shift in his seat. No, hold on a second. I have to... Oh, shit. Damn it. I was too late. I, ads are running. Ads are running now. Everybody enjoy the ads if you, if you have ads. I don't know how many they're playing. It kind of sucks. Whatever. ...to adjust his position, and at the same time break eye contact to look somewhere in this direction. Michael's exaggerated head movement that follows isn't for the purpose of maintaining eye contact. He could maintain it while keeping his head perfectly still. It is in fact to let the detective know he is maintaining eye contact. It's a way of asserting dominance in the exchange. He is telling the detective that he is the more confident person in the room at that moment. What I'm, what, what I have to ascertain here is what kind of guy you are. Um, whether this is you're like a serial burglar and this is what you're doing all the time or whether this is a one-off thing because of the power cut and everything that's going on tonight that's that's all we're here for um okay i understand your position like i yeah. say here i didn't do it, i didn't do it and you've heard that a million times i'm sure in your career but it's just ask me questions that's all i can do is answer them i guess I've got no questions to ask you. I mean, why, why did okay. you do it? That's, that's basically, yeah, that's, that's my only question. But coming from that position, and, I'm, and since I'm saying I didn't do it, I really don't have an answer for you except to say I didn't do it. I guess we haven't really got a, really? a, a great amount of talking yeah. about. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, the, whether you did it or not is an up for the discussion. Yeah, Okay. Well, you're absolutely um, right. It, it's really not. 
it's, You've it's no so doubt frustrating. come to notice how incredibly tolerant Michael is over the unjustness of the situation. It's the most unusual thing about his behavior, and perhaps what makes him an anomaly with respect to innocent subjects. So before moving on to the second phase of this interrogation, we'll show you a more common response from an innocent subject facing similar charges. This is 26-year-old Justin, this falsely one's also accused of breaking and entering, first-degree theft, and assault. He was arrested at his home and only read his rights to silence on the way to the police station. The footage will begin before the subject knows what exactly he is being charged with. In his mind, he knows he has done nothing wrong, and at this point is unaware he is oh, about to be wrongfully right. imprisoned for the just social over two years. It's like super interesting, but also like when when you start watching these videos and they start pointing out like the psychological things that these people are doing, and you start watching them, it's like, oh yeah, of course this person is innocent. What the fuck are you doing? But uh, in hindsight, we're these people are trying to catch guilty people, and and we're just people watching a YouTube video. So, or on the twenty seventh, it'll be people on Twitch uh, unjustly accusing somebody for something they very, very much so didn't do, but may or may not for the purpose of entertainment. You know what I read you earlier? The 19th of February. Two days ago, so it'll be Tuesday. Alright? Oh. Five, six in the morning. You were in. Hold on a second. Whoa. <laughs> Hold on a second. MJ, why do you always have the most interesting things going on? What were you. What's going on there? What were you being interrogated about? They had to interrogate all who knew my friend. Oh. Is this one of those things where you <laughs> you made friends with a not great person? <laughs> For anybody who doesn't know, MJ, MJ is my aunt. Um, my favorite aunt. And <laughs> she's, she is an investigative journalist. Uh, and I love her to death. She always has like the most interesting stories and the weirdest things going on. <laughs> oh no, this is real. This is real life. This is a real life thing happening. And okay, so you were being interrogated as a part of that investigation. I understand. That's... Okay. Well, um, hopefully you didn't do it. <laughs> I assume they let you go because you didn't. <laughs> Let's get back to this video because this is... <laughs> I was in my mother's house. You call her and ask her. Hey, Mom. I was downstairs asleep. Did, does, she know, did she know you were asleep at that time? Yeah. He doesn't see the interrogators as a threat, but more of an inconvenience. His responses are short and concise. He does not seek approval. He only responds to a question or states a point. I mean, did she see you sleeping at that time? Yeah, I don't ever leave. I, if I ain't doing nothing, I stay at my mother's house. So I'm not working, Good. I'm at home. I'm glad. I'm glad that you, you were you not a suspect. You didn't ready that day or nothing looking for, like, so looking for a job, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Sharing stories is fun. MJ. Okay, hold on a second. MJ. MJ, real talk. Do you want to be on a, on one of my two truths, one live streams? I think that you would have some of the wildest stories, and you would have the most fun with it. I'll, I'll wait for you to decide. They're usually on Thursdays, for reference. Uh, that morning... house got broken into. Okay. 
The detective's strategy is to reveal the charges in a periodic manner. Getting a confession to one charge at a time is far easier than gaining admission to all of them at once. The plan is to reveal the break-in and robbery charge ooh, first, ooh. then reveal the assault at a later stage. My the detective bad. goes on to explain that the accuser named Candy said she saw him loitering around her house in the evening hours of the night, and a short time later witnessed him break in and steal a multitude of valuable items. The detective then explains that she picked him out of a 12-picture lineup of suspects. She says you broke in this no. apartment. Okay, well tell me why... Justin is now aware of the burglary charge, which holds a possible 20-year prison sentence due to previous convictions. He will now begin to forcefully assert his innocence, and each time he does so, will bring forward his posture and strengthen his vocal emphasis while making the assertion. Alright, so I mean, she's saying that I was there before. Is that what she's saying? She's saying she's seen my face before the act, before the break-in happened? Yep. I didn't break in her house. I don't, I don't know who she is, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know no girl named Candy, none of this shit, man. Why is she saying that you're... I don't know why she's saying she's... I don't know why I don't know. What were you doing there? I was not there. I was not... I don't know this girl Candy. Don't Aww, candy I even MJ, heard thank you for gift, you gifted a sub. We're at thirty. That's like half of my half of my followers have subs now. That's insane. And you gave one to Sue. Shout out to Sue. Thank you, MJ. Bonks in the chat for bonks bonks and sevens. I want to see. I want to see everyone spamming emotes. This is. I love it. It's good. Thank you, MJ. Now I have to. Now I have to make a new stream goal. Hold on a second here. We'll end that one. We'll do 35, because 35 is the next one. We get 35, I get a new subs, a uh, new emote slot. So, Julian, <laughs> get some people to sub so that we can get another emote slot. The person he just mentioned was the accuser's ex-boyfriend. Okay. That's it. How do you know Tim Stoll? I grew up with the dude, man. Thank you, The okay. accuser's testimony was later put apart in court. She was caught lying on the stand multiple times, and Justin was exonerated. He was proven innocent not just beyond all reasonable doubt, but essentially beyond all doubt. The last thing I heard about them two, she had him arrested for domestic violence. That's all I know about this girl Candy. I ain't never went in that girl's house, none of that shit. I didn't do that shit. I did, as God is my fucking witness, I did not do it. I used to be a piece of shit when I got out of fucking penitentiary, I told myself, boy, going back. I ain't done nothing but work my fucking ass off the entire time I've been out. Can you, can you prove, other than you saying you're not, is it that, that morning? What can you tell, how can you prove to me that you were at home? All you gotta do is call and ask my mother. So you're telling me you didn't step foot out of the house? Not one foot. Tuesday? Not one. The detective then goes on to reveal Justin is accused of assaulting the supposed victim during the robbery. Take Van in the mirror and you hit her over the head with it and you guys fight. And she got injuries. No, man. And hell no, man. Get her goddamn boyfriend, Tim Stone, in here question him about her goddamn injuries. Look at that straight right there. This sounds like it's a goddamn thing that fucking her boyfriend, Tim Stone, done fucking done something to her and now they're trying to put it on me. That's exactly, I know that's what the fuck this is. And look, that's why we're talking to you, okay? No, this is bullshit, man, because I've tried everything in my fucking power to stay the fuck out of this goddamn fucking penitentiary shit. I did not do that shit, man. Okay. That's, that's why we're talking to you. We're here to, we're here to investigate this, okay? That's why we're asking all these questions. I'm sorry for freaking out, man, but I didn't fucking do this shit, man. I'm fucking shaking. I did not fucking uh -huh. do this, man. Justin had already served three years in prison for a robbery in his early 20s. He more than likely knew the reassuring tone of the investigator wasn't a good sign. Although slightly more animated than the average person, this form of aggression is a commonplace response from the innocent being directly accused. 
He comes off aggressive, but in a defensive manner. He is not being hostile, but highly combative when professing his innocence. His conduct is totally justified considering the circumstance. When facing a considerable amount of time in prison for something you didn't do, this level of anger is warranted. So when compared to the forgiving composure of Michael Dixon, the extraordinary nature of his behavior becomes even more pronounced. I really don't have an answer for you except to say I didn't do it. No, I guess we haven't really got a... Really, a, a great amount of talking yeah. about. Yeah, it's it's like I said, the, whether you did it or not is an album for the discussion. Okay, well, um, it, it's really not. There's a number a number of witnesses. Yeah, poor guy great. indeed. One of whom had a video camera. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Then. well, that's there. relieving. That's so relieving. Quite this honest. guy is yeah. super so calm. Video camera. I have. Okay. <laughs> They would have had That's to arrest you for his, punching his, 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 the in, in, in interrogator. That doesn't even make sense to me. Because if I'm on the video camera... Oh. Kubrick's getting up. That doesn't make sense. Hey, bud. You have a video camera that shows me? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. It makes perfect sense to me. Uh, we'll have to... I guess I have no choice but to get a lawyer then. If this is the kind of... Thing you're going to well, go this through is, with me. This, isn't, mean, go, this isn't going to go away. You, you're, you're charged with breaking and You will be charged tonight. That. Okay. You will be going to court in the morning. Perhaps the most upsetting moment, considering the fact that we know this man is innocent, you can see the fear emerge in his eyes as he realizes he won't be going home after this interview. Uh, yeah. Charged with breaking and with intent. Okay, that, that's that's what's going to happen right now. He is noticeably afraid of what lies ahead, yet reacts to the situation with reasoning and intuitiveness. Can I ask you something? Okay, are you just making this up that you have a video camera so you see how I react? Because it goes no, 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 that no. if you're saying, okay, let me hear me out for a second, please. If I am guilty, as you believe, because you have me on video camera, then okay, we'll go through the procedure. But I'm saying, I, I, you know, trying to call your bluff here because since I know I didn't do it, there's no way I can be on the video camera. Well, like I say, this isn't so, game, it's not a game of poker. Okay. Well, I've, got, I've got nothing to I'm gain from that. I'm not trying to give you a hard time, all right? You know what? I've got nothing to gain from that either way, um, which is why I'm not asking you, did you do it? I'm not trying to catch you out. I've got nothing to gain from that. Getting a confession void of evidence is in fact excellent for an investigator's career. It's a mark of merit and can accelerate promotion. Michael continues to profess his innocence in a calm and composed manner for a further seven minutes. The detective then asks that he draw out a map and specify his movements before the arrest. Every detail of his alibi was later proven to be 100% accurate. Like I said, on the information that I've got, you, you're going to be charged tonight with breaking in. However, I do have a duty to make sure that the truth is and the truth. Basically, the truth is paramount, and the true the true version mm -hmm. of events is paramount. And I have a duty um, to investigate all of this, and I will investigate. Okay. I assure you, I'll investigate this story thoroughly, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully, um, I'll be able to find something here right. which will either prove or disprove mm -hmm. okay. the, the you know what we've discussed tonight. Yeah. Okay. The problem is the speed at which this is going. Yeah. You know, like when I was on the ground, I was saying, go quickly to the terminal. I have like six or so guys around me, you know, like talk to the bus driver, right. you know, like I... Like I can't, I mean, I can't comment on things that okay, I seen, know, unfortunately. But, um, but now I'm... I'm left kind of, hanging, right? Now you I'm know? looking at this. I mean, this is the, basically on the evidence I've got, this is the only course of events that uh, can take place right now. But I, I will certainly that's so, make sure that this is That's okay. so actually like you bring up a a real good point. That that dumb that dumb shit really probably cost him his job. And that's really fucked up. That's really fucked up. Too thoroughly. I love okay, watching I these things though. That. That's my duty, that's that's what I have to okay, do. I trust you will. I was just wondering can I make a phone call? Because I'm supposed to be at work at eight AM. Uh, you're not going to be able to be at Walker. Well, okay, yeah, yeah. I know not to be able to be like because these people are Canadian. Ahead. I can arrange that. Uh, Whereas the other dude was to let someone know getting to accused. Place, yeah. So I'm hanging out in that room too. In America. No, nope, we'll be taking you downstairs. Okay. Uh, to a, uh, a larger custody facility which you have downstairs. Sounds fun. Well, it's not the most pleasant place in the world, but it's only Sounds for a few like hours. fun. Okay. Okay. It's really sad. Is this guy? This seems like a genuinely like. There. 
good, nice, kind, okay, well, considerate person. Uh, I, I, will look in, I will look into all I, of this. I trust you will, yeah. yeah. I trust you will. Um, you know, I wanna make, I'll make sure we got the whole picture. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're not in an enviable position, and, uh, you know. I understand so. the, like, the process. I just... I'm not satisfied with it. That's what I'm saying, you know. Uh, I, I don't understand. I don't and expect that you're going to be happy with it. You know, and I'm thinking, I no disrespect to you, but I know someone sitting in this chair has probably lied to you a million times, right? So I'm thinking, what can I do to uh, convince you? I try I to try give you the information. Like you've, 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 you've been, you've been, you've been very good with me, and I, I try and treat everybody as an individual. Okay. And my main aim is the two things: is that you get your rights. Mm -hmm. uh, that you're you're entitled to under the Constitution of Canada, mm -hmm. and that uh, you, you treat decently, and uh, that the truth comes out. The truth eventually did come out, but the suspect wasn't treated decently. Mm. He was kept in jail for three and a half days before a separate investigator looked into his alibi witnesses and checked surveillance of the area in question. He was then exonerated immediately. A civil trial ensued, and Dumb. Michael was awarded forty-six thousand dollars in punitive damages. Hey. The interrogating officer and three other investigators three days in were jail all for forty six grand without pay. Not not saying that not saying that it wasn't fucked up, but forty six thousand dollars for three days in jail doesn't sound too bad to me. To be to be very fair though, he had no idea if he was gonna get out or not. You want the last ten seconds of the video? Days oh my bad. My bad, my bad. A separate investigator looked into his alibi witnesses and checked surveillance of the area in question. He was then exonerated immediately. A civil trial ensued and Michael was awarded $46,000 in punitive damages. The interrogating officer and three other investigators were all demoted and suspended without pay. Ooh! Get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can all agree that's a uh, that man won and and deserved it. Mm. Good good point, Julian. Thank you. That's very good. Justice justice was served, rightfully so. God, these videos are so interesting to watch and like a little a little bit of uh, some behind the scenes. Yeah, literally. Yeah, they did torture him three days. An innocent man in jail for three days for. No reason. Other people, yes, that is true. Other people in chat felt that unfair pain as well. That made me happy. Yes, the it's always nice to have a happy ending. Unfortunately, most of these videos don't. <laughs> uh, so some uh, some little behind the scenes about uh, why I wanted to these is because they're it's fun to watch the interrogation videos it's like a, like a weird like morbid curiosity mainly because we believe that the narrator told us which could have been a lie a victory that is well you know uh the dude who, who runs the channel it's a uh, this is jcs criminal psychology this guy's actually like very well known um Anyways, uh, these videos are in very high demand because he makes very high quality videos. And as you can tell, he has not posted very like uh, consistently. His last video, which got 52 million views, was five months ago. So if I can give people like a little sense of like not true crime because it's not really true crime, but the same like format where they get to watch people being weird for different reasons. It could be fun. I think. That's why I want to do it. Um, something else that I want to talk about. I know that there's not a lot of people who watch Twitch in the chat at the moment because uh, that's Hunter. They're all watching Hunter right now because Hunter has decided to just stream when I stream, I guess. Um, but what I want to do... Hold on. I feel like my microphone is buzzing. But... Uh, if there are people that you watch on Twitch that you would like to see me try to get on a show, now would be the time to tell me because I am reaching out to people for December shows. Uh, and not just the game shows, but also like Ask and Andy or Amaranth. Okay, I'll reach out to her. I don't know if she'll get... I will, I will legitimately reach out to her. 
Uh, <laughs> If I could get Amaranth on the show, Julian, you, I know for a fact that you would do whatever you could <clears throat> to support whatever I'm doing. <laughs> you were on for your daughter's stream first. Who, which, one, which one of your daughters is streaming? <laughs> one of them is too young. And she's on TikTok, and I, I lurk and watch her to make sure everything... <clears throat> Everything that she's doing is safe. Um, for reference, and we'll go through a couple, because I think that this is an okay thing to do. Because, I mean, I want to get people on. Uh, here are some people that I want to get on the show. Julian's leaving. <laughs> uh, I want to get Carlos the Gardener. He's a pretty fun dude. Look at this. Look at this setup. Uh, Carlos the Gardener would be fun. Uh, I'm going for people who have like lower viewers and lower followers because I kind of gotta. Um, who is. Oh, okay. Let's look her up. Let's give her a follow. Oh, she's live right now. <gasps> We're going to watch her. Why does she have so many followers? <laughs> and alive. Thank you for the follow. Look. Oh, oh, okay. The 25-year-old. That makes sense. Okay, she's got she's got a, a good follow, following. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday streams. I feel like somebody just hit me with a ton of bricks out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. She's playing. This is good. I just feel like somebody punched me in my face. <laughs> All right, let's continue on. Uh, another person who just went live that I want to have on show. Yeah, because she's a badass. <laughs> Is voice over Pete, the meme himself. We are good. You hear that voice? I want him on the spelling bee. Let me type in chat. Pete, will you be on my spelling bee? Let's see. Let's see what he says. Pete, will you be on? Oh no! My spelling oh. bee. Hi. <laughs> Won't the teacher wonder <laughs> what a graduate is doing in class? <laughs> All right. That was a good response. He has no idea, by the way. He's just a dude playing Minecraft so with friends. I am, I'm sure they won't notice. <laughs> then what's the point of being on there if they won't notice? <laughs> yeah. Just curious. Just a little curious. <laughs> so, boys, I got to tell you. He's so funny. Pretty exciting. <laughs> I love him. It's uh, this is who we're having on on the 20th. Like an IRL or Not the 20th. The 18th. Is you guys want to do that? We can decorate the Christmas tree together. And then... Uh, and then I, I think can she's having my laptop over a Minecraft and could, uh, dining event with Ampros winners. Oh, okay. Know. So she's doing an event today. No this, Christmas music. It's November. This is who oh, we're believe we having on with the spelling bee on the 18th. Um, somebody that Sybil wants me to get is not Sage. Back. Epithet strikes back. Shia E. Mixley. Garen. Ugly Unicorn. So I don't, under, I don't know what Marbles on stream is for, banana. but... Uh, let's see. Let's keep going down the list. Uh, Will Neff is a bit too far out. We have Tony. Tony is one of Hunter's mods. I genuinely believe that Tony would just jump on the show. Twitch is adorable. I agree. There's a lot of, like, fun things. And a lot of fun people that do different things. I want to get stands. Uh, he's not live right now, but... Look at him. Like it says... And poppies, because I'm gonna get the rates just gonna be too hard to find grays. 
As somebody who's into entertainment and what's going on, MJ, you would absolutely love Twitch. I would love to get uh, Dr. K. I think Dr. K would be a fun person to have on the show just because it. I think he'd have fun with it. He's a, he's a psychologist uh, who helps people with uh, mental health stuff online. He's a, he's a great dude. I'd love to have him on the show. This is Alex. I'd like to have her on the show. She's a mod for Pay Money Wubby, and I don't know if she would join or not. <clears throat> the problem is, is like any any one of the Wubby mods is really hard to get a hold of, and I'd love to have them on just because they're all fun. Um, this guy right here, I think MJ you'll like a lot. His name's Lyle. Uh, he does a gecko therapy talk show. It's your name, my. Um... I don't know if we're friends. I don't know what we are, this relationship. I but, want him on uh, the show. You're, we're more of like a... <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> we're we're kind of co-hosting this internet show right now, you and me. We're co-hosts, let's, let's call it. Yeah, you know, you know I consider it... Um, I would, love, I would love to have him on any of my shows. Any of them would be fantastic. Uh, who else do I think that I could get? There's this guy I found who was doing... <laughs> I followed him during a... Uh, he was reading... Where was it? He was reading Harry Potter on stream, just like all the way through. And some guy came in and everyone laughed. He strode over to nearly headless Nick, squashing his head back onto his neck. Nick, he roared, how are you? So that's another one that I want on stream. <laughs> um, who's another person that I could hop in with that would probably be down? Sybil will one day get to be on the spelling bee instead of behind the screen, I'm sure. Uh, Todd as well, I would love to have on. I mean, he's just got the, a massive fo Look at that. I Look at that. He's got so many followers. I just, I just don't know if he'll ever accept me one day. I mean, I have his phone number, <laughs> so that probably helps. Uh, Valeria who was going by another name at some point. I would also like to have her on at some point. She's she's kind of chill. Um, where's, like, half of the other people that I was watching? Did I just pass by them without thinking? Or are they just live? No, there's also... Um, I'll follow him as well. I'd, I'd also like to have Ham on. Um, he's another Wubby mod. Oh my god. They're all like so much fun. Just to like, I'd love to hang out with them just for fun. Uh, that's kind of what I'm going off is like, I, I would love to have people on that I know that I could like get along with on stream. Um, as well as people who would obviously be good to do things with. Um, then like the mid-range stuff, probably like late next year that, oh, I'm not a point crow I might be able to get. Oh, he's playing. I'm going to do that next stream. Um, I get point crow on. Point crow's cool. Um, the dream, <laughs> the dream is to have Wubby, pay money Wubby who for some reason has 500k followers and is like insanely popular on the platform. Like homie's got 20 subs, 20,000 subs easy every month. It's insane. Um, I could also like, I could also live for an RT game or this is Julian's choice. Cover your eyes, everybody. Oh, she's doing an, an IRL stream. This is Julian's choice. He wants Amaranth. Um, she's one of the like biggest streamers on the platform. It seems like this is more fun for you than it is for entertainment. Whatever happened to an artist sacrificing themselves for the yard? MJ. <laughs> she has a great personality. The art. I sacrifice myself for the art all the time. 
You haven't seen the ghost hunting streams. You haven't seen Ghost Getters, MJ. Ghost Getters is a narrative thing that the first episode was a disaster. But the next episode is actually like there's there's story to it and stuff. Look at this. Tell me that this is this is just for fun. It is also it is for fun. Alright, spooky boys, let's go. We'll go Have spooky fun. boys. This is the artist sacrificing for the art. Fair. So oh wow. Oh, somebody set this up. Oh. So, oh, look at that. You could say thanks. <laughs> what? Oh, it's, thank you, Haley. That's what she meant. She said say Look at this. Um, I actually haven't watched this whole VOD. Where, the, where is this? Um, but yes, this is a thing that happened. MJ, do you want to see a bit of... We'll show you a bit of Spelling Bee. Some good stuff from Spelling Bee. So that you know what to get excited for. Kevin, for the win. Are you ready? Sure. For the win. The male genital organ of higher vertebrates carrying the duct for the transfer of sperm during copulation. Um, yes. Yeah! That's correct, Kevin! That makes you the grand champion! You won the grand prize of $100! This is our book! <laughs> Sybil said in chat, Sybil said in chat, some kid just came up to me at work and asked me to explain to their friend what the Holocaust is. I just said no. <laughs> okay, I'll wait here. What do you mean you'll wait here? I'm showing you spelling wait bee here. clips. What do you mean you'll wait here? Oh, I'm showing you uh -oh, spelling wait, bee uh -oh. clips. What do you mean oh, you'll no. wait? <laughs> we oh, got what streams do you mean <laughs> Oh, this is not intentional. We got streams you you oh, no. Oh, this is not intentional. We got streams oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, this is not intentional. We got streams oh, 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 no. Oh, no. This is not intentional. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is nobody This is so embarrassing. This is so embarrassing. This is so embarrassing. Anyways. The coffee is free, just like me. I'm an unpaid intern. <laughs> I'm glad you got that one, Julian. Where are all the rest of my fun spelling bee clips? There we go. Here's some good spelling bee stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, this one's good. Go ahead. I'm so you sorry. You pressed the wrong one. Oh, hi, Hunter. What's up, man? It's your best friend, Greg Sestero. I'm hanging with the great Michael so Godfrey. We're talking words. Absolutely. We're talking love. We're talking the room. Most importantly, we're talking the Spelling Bee Redemption round, man. The <laughs> Spelling Bee Redemption <laughs> round. And um, Hunter, you're a rock star. And I want to prep you here because when Johnny was going to make the room, he said, you know, I have to show my ass to sell this movie. Uh, because that's what life is about. You need to take a risk. Uh, you know, Hunter Wolf, my God, it's Tommy speaking. You know, good luck to you. You know, you need to have preparation. Some people can be champions. Some people may not. We'll wow, see art is what commerce. Hunter Wolf will accomplish. <laughs> that's life. <laughs> All right, Hunter. The word you need to spell. Axolotl. That's right. Axolotl. Best of luck, man. Yeah, good story, Hunter. Hunter Wolf, my God, don't hunt me. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Y'all caught up, buddy? So yeah, this is all. This, that's uh, that's spelling bee. We're actually, you actually, you know what? It's been a month. Like it was October seventh that spelling bee was up. So let's look at some stats. This is what I like to do on this stream, is to look at my stats. It's true, though. I do like to do this on my stream. All right. <clears throat> so let's look at the statistics for the past month, past 30 days. In the past 30 days since Spelling Bee, we have gained 18 followers, 286 views, 15 hours streamed, 124 hours watched, an 8 viewer average, a peak of 15 in 14 active days. Is that true? 
If I have 14 active days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. If I have 12, not 14. Uh, 14 active days, I guess, because the Twitch timer is weird. Um, and this is what the growth graph looks like, which is uh, kind of nice. As you see, I had a great viewership for the Spelling Bee stream, but not as many like followers or anything going on because uh, we didn't gain any followers from that stream, I don't think. Instead, we gained followers on the consecutive streams, which is pretty cool. Is anyone scared of secret truths no one is willing to tell each other but everyone knows or just me? Hold on, I got a button for this over here. Anyways, <laughs> he's on to me. <laughs> uh, we can look and see where I'm at. This is going to go up because of this stream. Thank you. Thank you, MJ, for getting me up further on this stream. Uh, we're ranked in the under 10,000s on Twitch in, in uh, terms of subs, which is kind of insane seeing as my overview says that I'm ranked 286,000 out of all streamers. Uh, the past month, look at all this. Julian, don't clip that moment, by the way, <laughs> if you know how to. Uh, the summary is uh, f I've had a total of 41 hours streamed, which um, pretty cool. Highest number of concurrent viewers it was April 4th, 2020. It's that, is that real? Peak viewers is 15 in the past. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, in the past. Yeah, uh, what? <laughs> is there a truth you won't tell? I don't know. That's a hard question. Don't ask me that. <laughs> is there a truth you won't tell? Do you have one in mind? Who should I compare to? Let's look at Hunters. He's live right now. So let's put him on blast. I'm not sure, but I could be wrong. Interesting. Um, we can talk about this <laughs> if you'd like. <laughs> it's kind of scary. Kind of a scary thought. Okay, so Hunter did a subathon, which is why his followers is insane right now. He went up like... 20, 30 followers in a span of a day because he streamed 42 hours straight. So Hunter, uh, he is currently higher up than I am. In fact, I can go to his channel right now and we can see a sub count. Uh, I'm just going to pop in and put sub count. Bye, MJ. Thanks for coming in. I hope you uh, show up for some other ones later. Uh, Hunter's at 135. Five. So he currently has like a oh, hundred more than I do. Uh, thank you. I enjoy being loved. <laughs> See you, talk to you later, MJ. I'll text you. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, Hunter uh, has been streaming for a year uh, longer than I have to be completely transparent. So we'll, we're looking at a month in to, rather than a year in. When did he start? Can I see? He started in November. Did he start? I think he started in October. Not November. Not October, September. I'm trying to see when his first... It was November 15th. Okay. November 15th was the first month. So let's do November 15th, 2020. To October 15th, 2020. That's November again. Or December 2020, sorry. 
December 15th. Okay. So this, comparatively, I find this view of analytics doesn't account for whether or not someone deserves to be watched. You're correct. You're correct. All it does is it shows the metrics of the person being watched. Uh, if you want to look at the analytics of whether someone deserves to be watched, uh, I feel like that's more of a, like, you'd have to go into all of their socials and see. Kick XQC to the bottom. I was about to say, if you're talking about, like, XQC, <laughs> um, I don't know. I'd be very interested to see, like, his metrics. I feel like, okay, Julian, you might actually agree with me on this point, or not. I don't know. Uh, I feel like when you're making things, if you want it to exist long term, it does have to be genuine and it does have to be you and it does have to not cater to a specific audience, right? So I could sell out and start making videos for like the 12 to 14 year olds that would be that XQC streams to basically. But it wouldn't be as long lasting because those 12 to 15 year olds are going to grow up and XQC is going to keep acting like that. And then they're not going to be interested. And of course, there's going to be more kids later on, but they're not going to be as, like, interested. It's, a, it's the difference between, like, a, like, those YouTube channels that make the same video over and over and, like, a Disney movie. It's like, when Disney was making movies, they made movies because they wanted to make good quality movies. And now we got people ages, like, 7 to, like, 50 who are all obsessed with it. I'm bothered more by the subjectivity of it all. Yes. <laughs> Which is why, like, uh, I was watching a video earlier by Devin Nash, who said that he's been, he's been a multimedia marketing dude for, like, 20-something years. And he said every single time that he has ever been completely stumped by the metrics of something, it's kids. If something does not make sense... It's kids. So that's fun. Uh, now we can do a comparative view. Let me see if I can make this work. I want half and half. I want half and half. All right. So. Uh, yes. Great. So Hunter's first month streaming, more or less. Let's look at these. He had gotten 37 followers, and I had 18. Um, to be fair, this isn't my first month streaming, so I didn't start from zero. Uh, it seems children are determining what should be watched by them. I don't see the value of it, but it's more than likely shaping who they will become, like Nick and Cartoon Network did for us. Maybe it's good. Uh, I think long-term because they're exposed to other people through XQC, like the, the better Twitch streamers, um, more like, like Ludwig or people who aren't problematic that are teaching them things, I think that long term it could be good. Um, and they might move from XQC to another not problematic streamer, or they might move from XQC to more problematic streamers. So... Here is the metrics for the difference between mine and Hunter's streaming first month. Um, the thing is, is you'll see they're very, they're very kind of similar. Uh, and I don't know what he did in those streams, so I can't tell you why. Oh, it'll tell me. He played Spider-Man, the new Spider-Man, Squadrons, Dark Souls, Just Chatting, Cyberpunk, Stardew Valley... He did a lot of variety. Cool. Uh, whereas I'm just doing just chatting and game shows and stuff with other people. Um, my, don't don't pay attention to my followers gained because it's. I probably would have gained more followers if I didn't have the followers already. I started out at like thirty something, and he started out at zero. Views gained over the course of a month. Uh, higher, even though he has a steeper curve moving up. Let's do this so that we can... There we go. Uh, hours streamed, he's doubled. Which, I mean, yeah, I don't... 
I I need to figure out how to move up in in streaming hours because my stream hours are not <laughs> very like even right now I'm about to hit two hours and that's a long stream for me. So that's cool. Uh, despite having less hours streamed, I have more hours watched. Maybe this conversation is a version of us saying XQC is bad for children as opposed to our parents telling us not to watch Ed, Ed, and Eddie or Pokemon or my thread of the convo. No, I, okay, that's, hey. <laughs> I like this conversation. This is a fun conversation. Um, that's a g very good point that I didn't think about is that maybe we're just the old heads now that are like, don't, don't watch that person. But in all honesty, Ed, Ed, and Eddie didn't really shape who we are. Uh, and Pokemon didn't really shape who we are, but the people that we got to like make friends with and talk to because of those things um, shaped who we are and helps us identify the good and the bad and things later. I think the good part of what XUC does, we didn't think, we think it didn't, okay, that's fair. We think it didn't shape. Um, I think that X, the things that are good about XQC is that he doesn't call himself a good person. Like, uh, like kids watching Mizkif, if you've ever watched Mizkif. Mizkif notoriously just calls himself like an asshole and a piece of shit person. Um, and I think that that's good for people to understand is that like, yeah, there are things about people that aren't good, but they also like, doesn't mean that they're necessarily bad people. It's just, we're all different and we need to think about the differences between each other and take the good things and try to fix the bad in ourselves, not each other. We can't fix each other. Anyways, back to these metrics. My hours watched um, comparatively to... Oop, 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 this might be damaging to the self-esteem of children. What well, might be damaging to the self-esteem of, of children? Julian. Trying to, is, are you talking about the music of calling himself a piece of shit person? Or at least create a standard, a standard of self-aware early. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, is that people will be more self-aware because of all of it. Ms. Kiff. It's Ms. Kiff. <laughs> Let me add him and see if he'll show up in chat. <laughs> all right, so... The important numbers, if we're talking about um, streaming, the are these numbers here. Uh, the viewers gained peak views, hours watched, and average viewers are the only things that matter to Twitch. Viewership means absolutely nothing to them. Subscribers mean absolutely nothing to them. It's how many people can you get to watch you and how long will they watch you once they start. So... You can see that he streamed double the hours that I did in, in first month, quote unquote first month, with one less active day. So he just had longer streams and had almost the same average viewership, except my, okay, my average views were his peak viewership and my peak viewership is currently his average viewership uh, at a year later. Uh, views gained is mine is higher with the lower hours, as well as my watched hours are almost the same for half the time, uh, which is pretty good. I want to see who else do I know of that hasn't... Uh, we can look at Greg and Michaela, but they haven't been streaming as consistently in the past month. This, man, I don't even, let's just do last month. Cool. We're going to get off of this one now <laughs> and go to Michaela. And then we'll compare to somebody that I want to see if my trajectory looks good. So this was Michaela's. It's about right. Her last stream was just streaming my stream to her stream, which is cool. Uh, you can tell 
that right now my, my metrics should be uh, to see if I can outpace Hunter or not. Um, not like a, like I'm trying to beat Hunter because I want to beat Hunter, but like as a, as an achievable goal, like, uh, like I think that it's insane that I'm at 30 subs. Granted, I gave myself five of them, but I think it's insane that I'm at 30 subs because you don't see, I was busy coming. I wasn't saying it's bad. That's why I got off of it. It's hard. It's not a, it's not fair to, uh, to look, compare numbers between you and me, Greg, because, uh, because that that'd be like <laughs> that'd be like doing this. Uh, wow, <laughs> what an overview! <laughs> like, it's not a good comparison because you you were busy. So I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying I'm not going to use it as a comparison at the moment. Let me look at because this is this is somebody that I aspire to uh, get a cult following. Like he has currently sixteen thousand active subs, and how many followers? How many followers is what we have? What the fuck is what there he is? Well, he's got 500,000 followers and has 16,000 active subs at the moment, which is uh, an insane ratio uh, if you consider the fact that that's less than a tenth of his following is subscribed to him. Whereas currently half of mine is subject to me, uh, which is cool. I like that. I like that number. I don't know. I feel like I'm getting bored looking at numbers at the moment. Anybody got any uh, other interesting things they want to talk about, things they want to do? <coughs> it's 4 o'clock over here. We're going to... Relly, you're back. Hello, what's Hunter doing? We can, I can check on that. I do both. I just want to use my space appropriately. Um, I think Eben's off playing games. I was going to show Relly. her the little additions I made to her room. Now you can, Eben now a you long can watch time both. ago demanded that I make her a room in my house because she liked coming over to my island more than she liked being on her island. I'm going to watch for a minute. Hold on. I want to see the new update stuff. Uh, you have some cute things in your shop, by the way. Oh. I haven't checked it today, so we're going to go check it right now. Uh, thank you for all of that. Oh, my God. Hi. You hi, are hi. back. Really, you got anything interesting happening this week? Pick flowers. Grab fruit. You're online on you the Switch. Do. Consider buy this greenhouse in your shop. Let me let me see. Um, because I might need to buy it to catalog it. But um, okay. So let me talk about stream schedule for this week for a second, because we're getting we're I'm gonna close it out here soon. I want to make sure Greg knows I wasn't I wasn't saying that his shit was bad. I just genu genuinely didn't know what his numbers looked like. <laughs> Greg, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if that hurt your feelings. I don't. You're not doing bad. All right. So, coming up this week, we have Ask and Andy Ghost Getters and Viewer Game Show. Now, the Viewer Game Show and Ghost Getters are going to be flopped um, more than likely because um, I want to make sure Ghost Getters is good. <laughs> It's basically what it is. And the viewer game show, uh, I hope we'll have a lot of fun with. But the ninth is Ask an Andy with Hunter. Um, so hopefully everybody can put some things into Hunter's Discord for us to, to react to and to answer questions for. Um, and then next week, next week we have Spelling Bee. And I'm very excited about that. 
and maybe I'll do a viewer game show instead of news that Saturday as well, since, um, just school, dude. I know. I know school. School and work hits you pretty hard. Um, and it's going to hit you hard again in, like, two weeks. Right? <clears throat> the 20th. Um... I don't know. I don't know what else to don't know what else to say for for people. Uh, come back on Tuesday and enjoy uh, Hunter giving us bad advice. If it was anything like the one with Julian, we'll have a great time. Uh, check out uh, for the people who are here. If you're not already in the Discord or following on Twitter, please do that because the Discord has stuff in it, um, and we'll have more things in it. And Twitter is the best place to be updated. There's also an Instagram, but don't worry about that one. That's pretty much it. That's uh, that's pretty much all I have for us for today. Um, this has been a good stream. We got to 30 subs. We need five more so I can unlock another emote slot. I'm okay with us taking a couple of minutes to not do that because I have <laughs> no idea what the next emote could be. Uh, might just be the B again. So, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'll see y'all on Tuesday. I hope you have a very lovely weekend. I am going to probably, uh, take a couple of hours to, uh, edit some videos. Um, and then we will, uh, I'll be having a nice ramen dinner with my girlfriend. Have a good weekend. Should I play y'all out? I don't know. Here, have this. Have this as your your ending the stream.